Hello and welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today we are going to analyze the Hindu dated 27th of March 2020. Displayed on the screen is a list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Time stamping for the same has been provided in the description of the video. Let's begin our analysis. Page number 1 of today's newspaper talks about 1.7 lakh crore lockdown package rolled out. Now we are aware of the fact that because of the coronavirus epidemic, the entire country is under lockdown. And because of the lockdown, the economic activity is badly impacted. Now in order to understand the real implication of this particular lockdown package, we need to understand the most vulnerable people as well. Let's try to understand who are most susceptible because of these lockdowns. First and foremost, rural and urban poor. These are the people who are basically daily wage earners. And because of the lockdown, any kind of economic activity which can benefit them in terms of earning their livelihood would be stopped. Just imagine a situation in which a cab driver cannot ply his cab. And someone who sells vegetables is not in a position to set up his or her stall. In this case, we can see that rural and urban poor who are basically daily wage earners and basically belong to the unorganized sector are most badly impacted. Second category of the people who are badly impacted are healthcare workers. They are the people who are expected to treat people who are suffering from one of the most notorious diseases of our time, coronavirus. In this case, they would require some kind of support if anything goes against them. Third important category of the people who would be badly impacted would be women. As the overall income of the family comes down, then there is a possibility that cash flow with women, which can be used for multiple purposes, is basically curtailed. Next big category, which is badly influenced, would be elderly who lacks support and similarly, people who are physically handicapped will find it difficult to tide over this coronavirus crisis. At the same time, even those people who are working in organized sector may face job loss and hence, they have to be supported as well. Now the current context of this lockdown package has to be seen from each of this group and that is what the purpose of our discussion as well. One more thing that is very important for us to understand is that package uses existing government welfare channels to provide relief in kind as well as cash to more than half of India's population. The package is so designed that it benefits the people who are most affected, urban poor and vulnerable rural families. Now when we talk about this particular package, this can be called as an umbrella scheme in which Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana can be the umbrella and other schemes which are under this umbrella are PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, insurance scheme for healthcare workers, cash transfer to poor and vulnerable sections, benefits for workers employed in organized sector and last and very important center and state coordination in utilization of existing funds. So you can see that all these schemes are basically structured in such a manner that the target group is properly identified and the scheme is prepared around that target group so that no one misses economic benefits of this package. In this context, let's go through each scheme one by one. Now the first scheme for which we can focus is the PM Garib Kalyan Anyojana. We are aware of the fact that under National Food Security Act of 2013, the government is trying to provide food security to 75% of the rural population and up to 50% of the urban population. In this fashion, collectively, the government provides support to about two-thirds of Indian population. Now because of this lockdown, the economic activity will be curtailed and these rural and urban poor will be greatly impacted. And because of this, the government has increased the quota of food grains for these people. Under the National Food Security Act, the eligible people were entitled to receive 5 kg of food grain at the rate of rupees 1 to 3 per kg for nutritional cereal, wheat, rice respectively. At the same time, through the package which is announced by the government, eligible person would receive additional 5 kgs of wheat or rice free of cost for next 3 months. This will ensure that they get food security through this mechanism. 
At the same time, the government has also taken care of the nutritional security and to ensure adequate availability of protein to all the eligible beneficiaries, 1 kg of pulses per family would be provided free of cost for next 3 months. In this way, the government will be supporting around 80 crore individuals for their food as well as nutritional security. The next group which is very vulnerable to this coronavirus is the healthcare people and hence the government has ensured that they will extend insurance scheme to people who are working as healthcare representatives. So any healthcare professional who while treating coronavirus 19 patients meets some kind of accident then he or she would be compensated with an amount of rupees 50 lakh under the scheme. As far as the coverage is concerned, this will cover Safai Kamcharis, Ward Boys, Nurses, Asha Workers, Paramedics, Technicians, Doctors and Specialists and other Health Workers. We can see that the coverage is as extensive as it can be. At the same time, since we know that health comes under the state subject, the applicability of this insurance scheme is for both centre as well as for states. So all government health centres wellness centers and hospitals of center as well as states would be covered under the scheme and in this fashion it will extend benefit to around 22 lakh workers. So in this way we can see that PM Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana is for food and nutritional security at the same time government has extended insurance scheme for the health workers. Now the third scheme basically relates to cash transfer to poor and vulnerable sections. Now because of the lockdown that we have seen because of the coronavirus, we know that the economic activity is hampered. And this has led to loss of wage for many categories of people. Now in this context, the government has identified that there is a need to give cash transfer to poor. At the same time, health should be extended to senior citizens who basically lack any kind of support and are vulnerable in this situation. At the same time, People who belong to physically handicapped category and widows should also receive help in this case. One more objective of government is to ensure that economic activity revival will take time. And in this case, it is important that all those people who go back to their villages should find gainful employment through Manrega scheme. So the government has implemented an increase in daily wages for the people who go back to villages. Now we are aware of the fact that government has already implemented the PM Kisan Yojana. Under the scheme, the government transfers rupees 6000, which is divided into three equal installments of rupees 2000 each for all the land owning farmers. At the same time, since economic activity will be withdrawn, there is a reason to actually extend cash help to these people again. For this particular purpose, the government has extended rupees 500 per month for next 3 months for all the 20.4 crore Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana women account holders. We know that because of the lack of economic activity, women will have less cash available and hence such initiative is in the right direction. Another scheme which the government has strengthened through this package is gas cylinders would be provided free of cost to 8 crore poor families for the next 3 months. Now we are aware of the fact that in the Ujwala scheme, government has provided free gas connections and first gas cylinder is free. At the same time, since there will be less of economic activity in the next few months, it is important that women do not participate in the activity of getting wood from the forest. This will also ensure social distancing as well. And moreover, this will also allow them to have more cash in hand. And hence, the government has extended the benefit of providing free gas cylinders to each of the 8 crore poor families. Now, there are people with special needs as well. When we talk about senior citizens, they do not participate in the economic activity as much and are dependent on others. So, there is a possibility that these people may not tide over these difficult times. And hence, the government has extended a benefit of Rs. 1000 to such people who do not participate in the economic activity much, but at the same time, they require this kind of support. This support is also extended to widow and people from physically handicapped category. 
as already mentioned we expect that economic activity will take some time to recover from this shock so the government has planned that all those people who go back to their villages should stay there for a longer duration and in this context under the pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana manrega wages would be increased by rupees 20 with effect from 1st of april 2020 wage increase under manrega will provide an additional rupees 2000 benefit annually to the worker at the same time the women organized through 63 lakh self help groups or shgs support 6.85 crore households the limit for collateral free lending would be increased from rupees 10 to rupees 20 lakhs so in this way we can see that the kind of cash benefits the government has extended would include poor women senior citizens widows physically handicapped people at the same time this benefits will also be translated through manrega and self help groups now under the package the government has also devised plan for people who are employed in the organized sector now in this context it is important for us to know that there are multiple type of schemes which government has run for the social security of the people who are working in the organized sector and these include epf that is employee provident fund employee pension scheme or eps and employee state insurance etc now it is important here to know that contribution for these schemes are made by employees as well as employer for example in the case of employee provident fund 12% of the basic salary is contributed by the employee at the same time employer also contributes in the employee provident fund and in this 3.67% is contributed by employer and employer again 8.33% is contributed for employee pension scheme in this fashion we can see that 12% is contributed by employee and 12% is contributed by employer now the government has made the announcement that contribution of 12% each for epf and eps the government will pay 24% of the contribution for the on behalf of both employee as well as employer for next 3 months in this fashion neither the employee nor the employer has to make any kind of contribution for these funds at the same time there is a catch that this would be applicable only to those workers whose basic salary is below rupees 15000 and are employed in industries having less than 100 workers so in this fashion the government has taken care of economic burden on employee as well as the employer now the last point of discussion is center state coordination for the utilization of existing funds now the building and other construction workers welfare cess act of 1996 provides for the imposition of cess of around 2% of the cost incurred by employer on the construction of buildings the proceeds of the cess are deposited under building and other construction workers welfare fund the fund is managed by state buildings and other construction worker welfare board in respective states as the name suggests the fund is utilized for the welfare of construction workers such as providing assistance during accidents providing pensions giving loans for the purpose of education and so on now in this context the government has announced that the states are expected to use the funds of around rupees 31000 crore in their respective welfare funds to mitigate the economic impact to construction workers similarly there is a provision related to utilization of district mineral fund as well now the government has also made provisions for the utilization of district mineral fund the ministry of mines has notified the mines and minerals rules of 2015 these rules prescribe contribution to the district mineral fund in which 10% of royalty in respect to mining lease and 30% of royalty in respect to mining lease is granted before 12th of january 2015 these funds are utilized under pradhan mantri khanish kshetra kalyan yojana for the welfare of areas and people affected by mining related operations now in this context the government has made announcement that the state government will be asked to utilize funds available under district mineral fund for supplementing and augmenting facilities for medical testing screening and other requirement in connection with preventing the spread of covid-19 pandemic as well as treating the patients affected with this pandemic 
So in this sense, we can see that the government has tried to cover all those who are involved in this kind of problem. There is a news on page number 8 which talks about G20 commits US dollar 5 trillion amid COVID-19 scare. This news is important more from the perspective of international organization and in this context it is important from the perspective of coming prelims examination. In the past we have seen many questions which come from the membership of various organizations. In this context let's take an example from a question which was asked in 2014. It reads with a reference to a grouping of countries known as BRICS consider the following statements. First. The first summit of BRICS was held in Rio de Janeiro in 2009. Second, South Africa was the last to join BRICS grouping. Now, in the context of this question, as per 2014, the first statement is incorrect. The first summit of BRICS was conducted in Russia. And when we talk about the acronym BRICS, it means Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. And South Africa was the last to join the BRICS grouping. And hence, statement 2 is correct. So the correct answer by this logic is option B, that is 2 only. In this context, you can see that this topic G20 is important more from the perspective of coming prelims examination. However, the context of the news is as follows. Saudi Arabia hosted a G20 meeting through video conferencing and discussed about the coronavirus pandemic. G20 or Group of 20 is an international forum for top 20 economies of the world. As of 2017, there are 20 members of the group. These are Argentina, Australia, Brazil, Canada, China, the European Union as a group, France, Germany, India, Indonesia, Italy, Japan, Mexico, Russia, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Turkey, the United Kingdom and the United States. So it includes 19 members and one group that is EU. The key countries to remember are BRICS plus G7. When you talk about BRICS, it means Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa and the G7 countries plus Saudi Arabia, Mexico, Argentina and Turkey are the key players in this. Now from the perspective of the examination, it is important for us to know that who represents these states. Now when you talk about G20 membership, the government and the central bank governors from 19 countries and the European Union represent the states. In this fashion, there are two basic representation available for each country or a group. And in this case, governments and central bank participate in them. Now, you might be aware of the fact that this group was started in 1999. However, since 2008, apart from head of the governments or head of the states, Finance ministers and foreign ministers have also periodically conferred at the summit ever since. So we can see that participation of countries in terms of numbers have increased in recent past. This brings us to the next important question is what is the main objective of this group? As mentioned, this group was founded in 1999 and the aim of this group was to discuss policy pertaining to promotion of international financial stability. It is also important here to note that it seeks to address issues that go beyond the responsibilities of any one organization. So in this fashion, we have talked about members of G20, we have talked about the representation and we have also talked about the objective of the organization. Now let's focus on the current context of the news which talks about the financial support of the tune of US dollar 5 trillion into global economy and contribute to World Health Organization led COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. In this context, it is also important for us to know that India's participation in G20 has been very important. In this context, in this meeting, India has asked the world to redefine its conversations on globalizations to include social and humanitarian issues like terrorism, climate change and pandemics along with the financial and economic discussions. So we can see that G20 as an organization or a group was focused more towards international financial stability. At the same time, India's quest is to increase the scope of action by G20 countries. Page number 16 of today's newspaper presents an interview of Ambassador of South Korea. Now this interview is important from the perspective of containment of coronavirus disease. 
it has been seen that many countries are badly impacted by the deadly coronavirus 19. Most of the countries have resorted to complete lockdown to control its spread. However, in the case of South Korea, no cities have been locked down, no transport was closed, and international entry is still open. South Korea, which has not only managed to flatten the curve of rising coronavirus cases in the country, but has done a remarkable job in fully curing 41% of its 9,137 citizens, and by Wednesday, the death count was 131 only. Now, in this context, it is important for us to understand what South Korea has done in order to ensure containment of coronavirus disease at the same time without resorting to any kind of lockdown. In this context, the ambassador has highlighted four important pillars of the policy that they've adopted. In the context of the service examination, this topic is important from the perspective of General Studies Paper 3 and will be part of disaster management. Now, the figure on the left-hand side of the screen talks about the four steps. First step is transparency in sharing information. Second is containment and mitigation. Third is implementation of triage and treatment system. And fourth is the main weapon of diagnostic kits and massive screening. Now, according to the South Korean ambassador, the first policy that the country has adopted is the complete openness and transparency in sharing updated information on the new infection through the Korean Center for Disease Control. In this particular endeavor, Korean media has also helped in identifying where, when and how the infections were discovered and investigated in the case. At the same time, the lessons learned during the MERS outbreak in 2015 were handy. As a result, there was no confusion among the public about the drills to be followed during the pandemic to avoid spreading of virus. Since the coronavirus is very contagious, so the second policy was containment and mitigation. After the information has been spread, all the people who were suspected to carry coronavirus were traced and the confirmed cases were contained in location. Mitigation involved lowering the peak of the outbreak through a social distancing campaign introduced just after the big break in Diagu at the end of February. Korea has managed to restrict the community spread of COVID-19 to Daegu only and 85% of cases were found in this region only. So in this way, we can see that their containment policy was very successful. At the same time, it needs to be highlighted that Korea decided to close all schools and impose voluntary restrictions on large gathering. No cities were put under lockdown. The third policy was implementation of triage and treatment system, which was developed during the MERS epidemic of 2015. In the triage system, Five isolation hospitals were created for critical and severe cases. Mild to moderate cases were sent to a network of community hospitals. Hotels, gyms and residential centers were revamped for new hospital beds. So in this fashion, they continued to increase their capacity and utilized the existing capacity to the health. The fourth policy was very potent. It promoted massive screening and fast tracking of suspect cases underpinned by accelerated production of diagnostic kits with a weekly diagnostic capability of 4,30,000. It is important here to highlight that anyone could go for the test and the report was available by evening. It is needless to say that the test was available for free and once any person was confirmed of this disease, policy 2, 3 and 4 were implemented to ensure that disease does not spread beyond the borders. So these are the four simple steps which the Korea has utilized in the process of controlling the coronavirus epidemic. In this context, it is important for you to know that you have to maintain successful models of containing diseases and this can be utilized in writing answers for disaster management. Page number 7 of today's newspaper has a news item which talks about of Chinese statistics and Ki Kwang index. Now this topic is very important from the perspective of coming prelims examination as we have seen that UPSC has asked many questions which relate to the index. In this context, it is important for us to know more about this index. Now history of the index is basically related to the idea that GDP as such cannot give reliable data and hence the current Prime Minister of China Mr. Li Kikwang has expressed his concern about overstated GDP numbers in Chinese economy. 
He felt that these numbers are unreliable because of the base year and other problems that need to be tackled. In this context, he identified three key indicators which should be studied on the real-time basis to identify the true strength of an economy. In this context, railway cargo volume, electricity consumption and loan dispersed by banks are the key indicators on the basis of which Ki Kuang Index is based. Once his ideas became popular, Economist magazine has constructed Li Ki Kuang Index to measure the growth of rate of Chinese economy. Now, presence of this index is very important for the India as well. As we have seen in the recent past, there has been controversy regarding how Indian economy figures are being calculated. We know that current GDP figures on account of questionable methodologies and database are used. And there has been controversy regarding the same. Some of the economists have highlighted that India may be overestimating its GDP estimates due to its flawed approach. Mr. Arvind Subramanyam, former chief economic advisor, has suggested that annual GDP rates during the last few years may have been overestimated by about 0.36 to 2.5 percentage points. This is very huge and there is debate about implementing similar kind of index like Li Kuang index in order to understand the true size of the economy. From the perspective of prelims, it is important to know about the index and its parameters. On the page number 5 of today's newspaper, there is an article which talks about speed at which the virus is spreading is shocking, says the researcher. Now in this context, the researcher has highlighted spike protein and its affinity to ACE2 receptors in human cells as the reason which has caused such a fast spread for COVID-19. In this context, let's try to understand what is ACE2 receptor. Now the full form of the term ACE2 receptor is angiotensin converting enzyme 2 or ACE2. Now in order to infect a human host, the virus must be able to gain entry into the individual human cell. Once they gain access to human cells, they use cells machinery to produce copies of themselves which then spill out and spread to new cells. In this context, the spike protein which is present on coronavirus and ACE2 receptor which is present on human cells has facilitated this kind of spread. ACE2 is an enzyme which is attached to the outer surface or the cell membrane of the cells in the lungs, arteries, heart, kidney and intestine. This is the reason why coronavirus has spread so fast and breathing and coughing and sneezing are the primary reason through which it is transported from one to another. Now try to understand that ACE2 is a very important component of human body and it helps in lowering the blood pressure by catalyzing the cleavage of angiostein 2. At the same time, this ACE2 also serves as the entry point into the cell. Now here in the diagram, you can see that this is the coronavirus and on the surface of human cells, these are ACE2 receptors. The spike protein, which is more of a crown-like structure, attaches itself to the ACE receptor. This is the way the virus enters into the cell body and releases its RNA. Once the RNA is released, the virus RNA uses the host cell to create new virus RNA and assembles new viral particles. Third step is new virions, that is virus particles are released. And in this fashion, this infects the entire human body. Now the point that we need to understand is that tiny molecular key on SARS-CoV-2 that gives the virus entry into the cell. This key is called as spike protein or S protein. Please remember, S protein is there on the virus, that is coronavirus. The structure of ACE2 receptor protein which is on the surface of respiratory cell and this is where spike protein of coronavirus interacts with the human cell and releases its RNA. In terms of analogy, if we think of human body as a house and coronavirus as the robber, then ACE2 enzyme would be the doorknob of the house's door. Once the S protein or spike protein grabs it, the virus can enter the house and cause infection. Page number 9 of today's newspaper presents a news item which talks about DRDO develops ventilator. Now this news is important from the perspective of prelims examination and we need to understand how does a ventilator work. At the same time, because of the pandemic COVID-19, 
there is a dire need of more and more ventilators. In this context, many private houses have also come forward in order to develop ventilators. In this context, role of DRDO is appreciable which has developed ventilator in collaboration with Society for Biomedical Technology that is SBMT. At the same time, private organizations like Mahindra and Mahindra have also announced that they can develop ventilators which would cost just rupees 7500 and they can deliver these ventilators in 3 to 4 days only. It is important here to know that the current cost of ventilator that is there in the use is around 5 to 10 lakhs. In this context, let's try to understand what is a ventilator. Now, ventilator is a machine that helps a person to breathe. A ventilator may be needed for few hours, weeks or months. Sometimes it may be needed for the person's entire life if the person has moved into vegetative state or has gone into coma. Now let's try to understand what are the various aspects of ventilator or in simple words how a ventilator works. Now the first important thing about ventilator is it maintains supply of oxygen along with other gases or even medicines in order to ensure that vital organs function regularly. Second important aspect is that ventilator functions in order to ensure that oxygen supply and other gases are delivered at required rate only. There should not be up or down or even fluctuations in the delivery of gases or even medicines. Third important aspect is gases which are given through ventilators should be humidified as well. This is done to ensure that the mucus on the inner lining does not go dry. So in this case, maintaining oxygen, maintaining the ratio of different gases and maintaining the moisture is an important part of ventilator. Fourth important aspect is to move oxygen from the ventilator to the lungs and the last part is definitely to remove carbon dioxide from the lungs and dispose it off. There are many sensors on the ventilators which keep on monitoring various vital signs and if any kind of malfunction is being observed then the ventilator highlights its parameters. This actually is a great tool which helps in medical attendance of patients who are suffering from disease with which they find it difficult to breathe. So in this sense, the ventilator blows oxygen into the lungs and removes carbon dioxide out of the lungs. The ventilator is attached to the breathing tube at the end. The tube is placed into windpipe through the nose or mouth. Sometimes the tube is placed through hole in the neck called tracheostomy. So this brings us to the important question of when is a ventilator used? Now as already mentioned, ventilator is used when a person finds it difficult to breathe. Another very important usage of ventilator is even during surgery. When anesthesia is being induced to a patient for the purpose of surgery, ventilator is being used. In this process, the ventilator helps the person to continue to breathe even during surgery. Second most regular use of ventilator is when a person has difficulty in breathing. Now this can be caused because of various diseases which is like pneumonia and other lung infection amyotrophic lateral cirrhosis or upper spinal cord injuries in which the person finds it difficult to move and even to control body parts. Strokes or brain injury or drug overdose also demands for the use of ventilators. Now usage of ventilator is a very specific use at the same time it requires medical attendance all the time. Medical assistance is required because ventilators are to be monitored frequently any kind of up or down movement has to be observed and necessary action needs to be taken. Second important aspect is that a person who is there on the ventilator cannot cough up and hence there is a deposition of cough and mucus in the oesophagus, trachea or even lungs. This needs to be removed regularly. Third, the person who is there on ventilator may develop anxiety as well and hence medical assistance is required to treat anxiety. Last important aspect is since ventilator are used through nose, mouth or even through throat and hence talking and eating is not possible. In this case, in order to communicate with the patient, medical assistance is required. Now after the analysis, we can go for prelims points for revision. Now there are few things that we need to pay attention to. The first is Society for Biomedical Technology. Now we should remember that this is the organization which has partnered with DRDO to develop ventilators. 
Second important point that we should keep in mind is the spike protein or S protein. Please remember that spike protein is there on the coronavirus. At the same time, ACE2 receptor is also important and we need to focus on the name and function. We know that ACE receptors have utility in managing the blood pressure. Third important aspect that we should focus upon is G20 groups and its members. We are aware of the fact that not only countries but also groups are part of G20 membership and in this context this is an and in this context this is a very important piece of information from the perspective of prelims examination as part of the package we have discussed many schemes like pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana pradhan mantri garib ann yojana pradhan mantri kisan yojana national food security act of 2013 now in the context of the coming prelims examination all these schemes are very important and you should go through the basic provisions of these schemes next is ventilator how it works and last but not the least is the ki kwang index which has been presented by economist magazine and the present prime minister of china so in this context all these points are important and you, and you should keep a note of them in the view of coming prelims examination now we have a very important announcement for you from now on we are not going to discuss multiple choice questions in video we shall instead give you those questions as quiz we recommend you to first watch the dns video and then attempt the dns quiz this will enable you to use and apply information acquired from the video to test your understanding and retention so you can see here it is a video there on the e learn and once you go down you can see there is a prelims quiz as well you can choose your answer like example for silver iodide and you can see that the correct answer is reflected here in terms of silver nitrate then you can move to next question and after your quiz is complete you can press submit to see how well you have performed for those of you who are not aware of e learn e learn is rao's new web app or learning portal we have designed it specifically for upsc aspirants keeping in mind the learning and testing requirements of civil examination I have already recorded a short intro video of e-learn which is available on YouTube and the link for the same is available in the description of this video. We suggest that you watch that video for a quick overview of e-learn. Also, given the COVID-19 situation, where in the availability and delivery of study material like Focus magazine and Prelims Compass book is disrupted, we have made PDFs of all those free on e-learn. all you have to do is to create a free student account by registering yourself in two easy steps thereafter log in and you will be able to download all pdfs for free for those of you who want video discussion of mcqs we have separate series on prelims practice mcq wherein we discuss 10 upsc previous year questions as well as 10 questions from rao's ias prelims test series theme and subject wise they are also available as a playlist on e-learn for your reference with this we have come to the end of today's session let's move to the question of the day now the question of the day reads which of the following statements is are true about g20 first taiwan is one of the oldest member of g20 second statement is g20 membership is open for countries only and third statement is in g20 there is no country from african continent we have to select correct answer from the code given below option a reads 1 and 2 only option b reads 1 and 3 only option c reads 2 and 3 only and option d reads none of the above 